In 2022, scientists hoped to send a tiny camera to the moon to search for extraterrestrial life. Here's a surprise, though. While the new James Webb Space Telescope will be exploring distant exoplanets, the LOOP mission's lens will be taking pictures of Earth. Is this a joke? Not at all. Scientists want to find out how exactly Earth looks from space so that the James Webb Telescope could search for similar and potentially habitable exoplanets. That's because astronomers have long puzzled over the question raised in the mid-20th century by physicist Enrico Fermi. Where is all the extraterrestrial life? Well, observatories are preparing to receive the first data, I suggest we consider the most interesting theories to explain the Fermi paradox. Could we be the only living beings in the universe? Or maybe Earth is just an exhibit in someone's zoo? Why can't we find any signs of extraterrestrial intelligent life, no matter how hard we seek? What if immense space beyond Earth is totally dead? Maybe it really is, and we just don't know the exact recipe for the beginning of life. The James Webb Telescope will be looking for rocky planets like Earth in habitable zones around stars where water can exist in a liquid state. But that's not enough. It's believed there's another indispensable condition for the emergence of life, and that's volcanoes that enrich a planet with organic substances. And there also must be a magnetic field to protect it from stellar winds carrying charged particles. Besides, let's not forget about a big moon. We need it to cause tides and stir this organic soup. Moreover, a star system where life might potentially begin must lie away from a galactic nucleus and regions where supernovas occasionally explode. But even that won't be enough. I strongly suspect the recipe for the beginning of life requires hundreds of other ingredients. In the entire endless universe, the right combination of them could possibly end up in the same pot only once. And create Earth, an absolutely exceptional place in this regard. However, a lot of scientists don't like its uniqueness. And it also kind of makes us bear too much responsibility. If we accidentally destroy all life on the planet, that's going to be some truly epic fail. Although there's another theory to explain the Fermi paradox, which doesn't suggest chronic loneliness. What if there is life in space, but it's just not intelligent? This idea was proposed back in the 90s by economist Robin Hansen. He tried to prove that our humanity could be unique and came up with a concept he called the Great Filter. Let's imagine that life appeared only on four of around 300 million rocky planets existing in our galaxy. That's still too few. And according to the idea of the progress of life that we humans support, all participants of the evolution race go through the first Great Filter in 1.5 billion years. Then complex living cells start to appear on three planets, and the fourth one stays trapped in the past for good together with its primitive bacteria. The rest of them manage to avoid the dropout, but they'll have to face another great filter in a billion years. Multicellular life will emerge only on two planets, and then large plants and animals will come on stage. Another billion years later or so, Earth remains the only one to overcome the next great filter, and marks this achievement with starting intelligent life. Long story short, this concept to explain the Fermi paradox suggests that alien creatures aren't little green men in flying saucers, but brainless bacteria or wild animals living on pristine planets. In fact, that's what scientists developed the LOOP project and the James Webb Telescope for, to find telltale signs of such life. Certain philosophers claim that humanity has been chosen for this mission, as if the universe needs us to help it better comprehend itself. But the chosen ones are currently a package deal. Am I right, Lana Wachowski? And this non-uniqueness of humankind 
paves the way for the most intriguing and frightening solutions to the Fermi paradox. What if there are a lot of intelligent creatures across the vast space, but they just haven't found the way to go up and explore it? To build rockets capable of entering orbit and reaching the moon, we needed significant technological breakthroughs and heavy resource consumption. But if the Earth, let's say, became two or three times bigger, even our top-notch rockets wouldn't break out of its gravity. And the large majority of rocky exoplanets that we know of belong to this exact type of massive super-Earths. In places like that, intelligent beings would have to give up their dreams of reaching space, at least until they invent anti-gravity devices. And that's not the only obstacle they may face. Scientists assume that conditions for comfortable life may be found on planets with warm oceans hidden under thick ice crusts. And this ice will effectively shield the intelligent creatures not only from space radiation, but also from entering outer space. That's because to do so, they'll need some unthinkable hybrid of a submarine, an auger, and a rocket. But even if another civilization lives in the same conditions as humans, it could be destroyed by a nuclear war, a collision with a giant asteroid, or another catastrophe. These are sort of great filters also, and there's no guarantee that we can survive them ourselves. In the end, alien nations may abandon the idea of space colonization because they want to watch Netflix and chill instead of flying anywhere, especially if they were the ones to invent a perfect virtual reality. Maybe we'll also give up this expensive hassle of exploring outer space. Even the James Webb Telescope is unlikely to find these home buddies lounging around thousands of light years away. However, even our best telescopes can miss advanced civilizations that could have already populated dozens of star systems. And this variant is possible in case the scariest solutions to the Fermi paradox turn out to be true. What if there are lots of intelligent aliens up in space and we just don't see them? After all, what made us think that another form of life must develop just like it did on Earth and undergo the same great filters? Signs of alien creatures might be everywhere, and only our prejudices stop us from seeing them. According to one of the latest scientific assessments, right at this moment, our Milky Way could possibly be inhabited by 36 alien civilizations. Some of them might even be exploring star systems not far away from Earth, and we don't even notice it. Perhaps some highly developed extraterrestrial beings have long known everything about people and are watching us on the screens that they've installed all around Earth. Maybe that's what doesn't let us spot aliens, but allows them to see us pretty well. Like we're in a cage in a zoo. If we do this to some clever animals, why can't other creatures do this to us? Maybe we're characters of their favorite space show, and that's not the most pessimistic hypothesis. Our galaxy could be not a comfy zoo, but rather a dark forest full of ambush predators. None of the civilizations knows what to expect from the others, so each of them sticks to the most reasonable tactics, hiding in the bushes. But if any of them dares to come out, it'll be immediately exterminated by the first opponent that notices this public appearance and sees it as a threat. Well, that seems to be the only reliable way to secure your own survival. The possibility of the worst-case scenario makes some scientists criticize the SETI project that deliberately transmits signals to distant stars. So, should we start preparing for the invasion now? I can't give you a clear answer to this question, and nobody on this planet can. But I can suggest you look at this paradox from a different perspective, not through the James Webb Space Telescope, but through the Loop Project's camera. When we try to explain why there are no signs of other civilizations up in space, we're taking a closer peek at our own world, not theirs. Will we destroy Earth by a human-made great filter? Will we give up space travel for the sake of lying on the couch and having fun? And what are we going to do if we meet friendly and vulnerable alien beings? 
I mean, there's a good chance that we're the only intelligent creatures for millions of light years around. So, do you think we'll be a good or bad role model for the entire universe?